Four Midwest Guys presents Mandalorian Review. Everybody, welcome back to Ford Midwest Guys Presents The Mandalorian Review. I'm your host, B. Willie, and with me always is Johnny Z. Hello, everyone. And again, joining us via Skype, the Force Ghost is returning. <laughs> B. <-Willie, laughs> Mr. Brian Ankenbauer. Here what's up, what's up? What's up? Well, gentlemen, it. Uh, I don't think I've ever looked, uh, with all the craziness going on in the world, I don't think I've ever looked forward so much to a new Mandalorian a Wonderful episode. distraction. Nice distraction. <laughs> something to take our mind off the craziness of the real world right and uh take us out to a galaxy far far away from flipping everything so and bugs and uh, yes and bugs and bugs <laughs> <laughs> so there you go um but uh i don't know about you boys but I, I i didn't think this was as good as last week but i did enjoy the episode i, I thought it has some really nice tie-ins especially if you you uh invested into uh, rebels uh the series there's some tie-ins there we'll get into that a little bit later but uh, I, overall, I did. I, I I thought it was a good episode. Uh, another classic kind of Star Wars. You had some creature. The Star Wars. I love that they put in the Star Wars creatures back into these these episodes. You know that, mm -hmm. like the job of the hut. You know, it was always one of my favorite. You know, the Rancor is one of my favorite scenes in all of Star <laughs> Wars. And, and, and just to have that 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 creature feature kind of thing going on oh, again. Hell, like all of Moss Eisley was basically just creatures. That was what yeah. sold that was like just seeing how weird everything looked. Yeah, <laughs> just crazy and uh, uh, frightening at the same time and put that little extra adventure into it, you know, <laughs> um, that, I, that I love. I, what do you guys think? I, I'll open it up real right. quick. Uh, Hank, uh, we'll see how the, the, the video feed works for you there. I'll let you go next. Oh, okay. Well, it, my video feed hopefully is working fine today. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought the episode was a, um, I'm actually disappointed in myself last week. Remember, I, I was like, I'm going yeah. to give it a B plus because I don't think you going any higher. Yeah. Well, this this one was worse than last week, so I got to go even lower. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> yeah. You That's go what you get, man. man. <laughs> so, like, so, like, a couple of things that I, I like was the, uh, obviously, the X-Wing. Because I always, I always love love seeing mm. the um, the ships. Brian, yeah. you know, we always talk about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Love seeing the, the star, the fighter pilot, the uh, the guy from Kim's Convenience. Uh, it was yes. fun. It was fun. It was fun seeing, you know, a recognizable face behind the, the cockpit there. Yeah. Um, Obviously, Dave back, right? We'll talk about him. Yeah. But you know. Um. Yeah. I I felt like we we've seen this episode before in episode of Rebels. You when, think so? Yeah. When um, uh, what's his name? Him, the him and the other guy fell through the ice. Uh, That's all you him and, him and him and uh, 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 Creek Creek not wasn't was his oh, name. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the Callus and Zeb episode. Yes, that what you're talking about. Yes, yeah, I yeah. can see some parallels there. I didn't th yeah. that did not come to mind when I was watching it, but yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I, I, I some... kind of felt I kind of felt like we were we were watching that all over again, um, throwing in the aspects of that that planet that they were on with the, with the spiders. Right, gotcha. Okay, yeah, it was just it just kind of just. I don't know. It, it felt like it was there wasn't enough movement as far as why we have to why do we have to you know why are we on this planet as opposed to going to the next planet where we have to be yeah you know, because that's where the eggs need to be and by, what is what is it the Disney buy buy stock in an egg, eggland farm or something <laughs> actually I found it, the whole thing kind of gross but but when I, while I was watching it but but we do the same thing so uh, I, well, I, I got thinking I was like I was like I kept thinking I was waiting I was waiting for the 
dun 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 Rocky, Rocky, <clears throat> Baby Yoda out there. Yeah, yeah. And Baby doing Rocky a, doing a montage, training montage. Yeah, yeah, the, the little puppeteers right behind him yeah, are working faster. Yeah. <laughs> John, what did you think? Uh, you know, and and again, I'm I'm coming from a spot where I've I haven't seen Rebels, uh, so yeah, obviously I didn't get any callbacks or anything to it. But I think for me, it's it's serviceable. That's the best I can say about it. You know, yeah. it's it's one of those. It's not awful, and it wasn't. It, it, it's just because last episode was. I mean, it's the season premiere, so they got to have like you know they got to kick things off. They got to make it exciting, and they did, and yeah. they did it in great fashion. And mm -hmm. you know, we had a couple moments here and there, but overall, it was. Uh, it it felt really much like a, a placeholder episode. Like you knew mm -hmm. where they were starting, and you knew where they were going to end. And in in between was just stuff. So are you going to use the F word, the filler? Filler. filler uh, word. Padding, 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 <laughs> padding, padding, padding. No, no. It's uh, there, there are some moments in there that are fun. Uh, we'll we'll get to them when we do yeah. our episode breakdown. Right. But overall, and I got I gotta say this. Like when the director's name popped up, it was like the first thing that came to my mind was like, oh, it's uh the Iron Man guy, uh, not Iron, uh, Ant Man guy. Ant Man guy. And. It's, you know, Peyton Reed, and I'll always know Peyton Reed as that director they got to replace Edgar Wright on Ant-Man, because I was a huge Scott Pilgrim fan, and I, you know, I love Hot Fuzz, and I love all of his Edgar Wright's movies. Baby Driver is one of the best action movies of, like, the last decade, mm. and could you imagine that kind of energy injected into Ant-Man? <laughs> that would have been amazing, oh. but... Yeah. They clearly don't like, you know, directors that have too unique of a vision. <laughs> so, you know, we enter Peyton Reed, and again, Ant Man was serviceable, and so was this episode. <laughs> you know, that's that's about all go. I can say. Okay. Um, I one thing I wanted to bring up last week, which I forgot, and I, just okay. a, little, a little little tidbit. Um, all right. The award geek in me. Sure. Um, Ludwig Göransson, the composer. Uh huh. Yeah. He is one T away from an EGOT now mm. because he won the Emmy for best score for Mandalorian mm. and he already won an Oscar and a Grammy for Black Panther. Mm. So within like two years, he's got three of the four coveted EGOTs. Ah. <laughs> so if that guy gets on stage or makes a musical at any point, that's all over. He's got all four. <laughs> well, he, he definitely deserves it. I mean, oh yeah, he's is, amazing. It's a unique soundtrack that yeah. uh, to the, the Star Wars universe and really broadens this spectrum of, of Star Wars. Music. He's he's breaking a lot of ground as a composer, mm -hmm. and By far. you know, yeah. yeah. Love every second. I love. I mean, it gets stuck in your head. I'll be was at work going. Da, 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 da. Yeah, my daughter has to hear it. You know? yeah, and yeah. and it's it's a great score because it mm -hmm. drives so much of the energy of the show. It does. You know, and it sets the tone and mm -hmm. it makes you excited to see what goes next in, in the tradition of star wars music a lot of people say that the music is the oxygen of what makes star wars star wars and i believe it's the same with the mandalorian it helps it helps break that it's it's helping tell the story yeah so um but it definitely follows that all right guys so let's get down into the episode itself so uh right off the bat um uh, you know he's he's going going along i, I gotta oh. say that first shot the very first shot okay that like the first the first moment there's like oh it's clearly a western because like when he's at it like he's like it's like the horizon shot where it's like and you see the smoke see coming out yeah, well no yeah. you don't see the smoke it's like it's he appears like right out of a mirage and just goes straight center frame uh, that was straight out of high plains drifter oh, okay yeah so, yeah, so, so that was like, again we're doing another western homage in our <laughs> space western <laughs> that's cool i i mean I, I i didn't pick up on that but there you go so more and more I'm, space I'm, space western uh, homages. <laughs> oh, throwbacks, yeah. Throwbacks. Um, so, but let's talk about it. So uh, he gets he gets tripped up. He put, they do the whole clothes line on the speeder thing, which is <laughs> back from Endor uh, with the Ewok you know, pulling the line. But this one's covered out of the sand, knocks his ass off. I thought Baby Yoda was dead. He <laughs> should have oh, probably yeah. been dead. Like, what was it? Ste um, Steph had a huge reaction the second we saw him like tumbling. My, my daughter did too. She's like, "Oh my god!" Um, but did that to break the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, he had his jetpack to kind of you know keep himself upright. But uh, but obviously, it looked like to me it was at least one bounty hunter from uh, last season. The the uh, trans I think it was a uh, they call it transocean or whatever the uh, the 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 uh, lizard guy. 
Um, we'll just call it that. Lizard guy. Yeah. Lizard guy looking guy. He looked like he was from last. So it looked like maybe he hired some help from local Tatooine kind of. Uh, yeah, correct us in the comments, so, everyone. Who is lizard guy? Lizard guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody. Uh, oh, well, obviously they, you did well, not do your research, Mr. Willenberg. Well, you want to call yourself Star Wars fans. You can't just call him lizard guy. <laughs> Worst podcast ever. Ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, it looks like me like so it seems to be the threat of last season of baby Yoda or the child being hunted continues like that threat is being reestablished this season. So that well, was, we kind of we knew that was going to happen, though, because yeah, 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 Mop Gideon's after him anyway. Right. Yeah. So and that's who fit, that's who set out the bounties after him to begin with. So we know that's going to be he's going to be chased probably. Every every season, I would assume. Oh yeah, I, it was yeah. Just... Like was it? We find out later. Like there are certain communiques on the ship that are turned off. Mm -hmm. So I actually <laughs> thought they were gonna do it the first episode, but they kind of held off and they stat raised. You know, did the really cool crate dragon thing. But then right off the bat, we're reestablishing that we're they're reminding us. You know that threat's still there, and he's still gonna be dealing with that the whole season long. Um, one little side note for those of you who I did do some research. Um, <laughs> if you notice the little guy that he comes up against at the end, um, that is actually, he looks a lot like the, the character named Scrap a Jaw Motito. Uh, Mojito? Mo Motito? Mojito. 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 <laughs> Scrap Jaw Mojito. Scrap All right, hey, cool. Mojito. Ready and, for a drink. <laughs> and if you don't know who that is, I've got a little picture for you here. Um, so you may remember that's from The Force Awakens. That's the guy that's kind of taunting Ray as she's kind of scrubbing her scavenger parts or whatever. On yes, that, that, that drove the plot completely along for me. <laughs> it did, didn't it? I mean, it was such a huge character. Um, but it looks like they, <laughs> All that it could be the same guy. It could be the same character, but I doubt it. I, I think it's just somebody that has the same kind of get up and their same species so did he survive the fall then or uh, if he <laughs> did he obviously if it's the same character then yeah he survived he must have survived the fall and moved on from one desert planet to another um <laughs> being jacku <laughs> and not tatooine. i told you jacku's basically tatooine <laughs> it's the same damn thing <laughs> So, but there you go. There's a little nugget for you from they're throwing in things again. You know, one big giant story. They're you know give us a little Easter egg. So there's an Easter egg for you uh, that I happened to. Uh, I, it took me a while to find that guy's name too. Let me tell you, I, I had to do about 30 minutes of research to find that uh, on Google today. So, wow. Um, there you go. So there's there's Scrapjaw. It may have been Scrapjaw that, uh, which was hilarious by the way. I thought that whole scene where he gives him. You knew it was coming, but he just takes off, and then you don't see him, and then the next thing you do, you see him just <laughs> does the the dead drop. Did you guys like that scene? I like yeah, how the jetpack like landed. <laughs> What's that? I like how the jetpack just like calmly lands and just falls yeah, over. Yeah, he, he, he does a uh, SpaceX <laughs> thing with the the jetpack, like <laughs> like ooh. But I thought that was cool. Um, all right, so let's move on to uh, yeah. That would be one of those neat moments I was talking about. I did like that opening of the episode. What's that? Oh, or just the, that, that the whole, whole like speeder bike, whole speeder bike the, you know, the, the squaring off of the the, the bounty hunters, and then mm -hmm. just that whole. I mean, because throughout that thing, like you kind of see that not only do we still see that there's a, a price on his head, mm -hmm. but Mando didn't do any kind of like special actions while that th that uh, that guy or that that guy had uh, the knife to Baby Yoda's throat. <laughs> right. So he wasn't about to put any kind of risk to mm -hmm. baby Yoda. So it definitely shows more of a, a connection there with him too. Yeah, definitely. They, so. Not only, do, you know, he, not only is he his, his ward, but he actually does care. Yeah. Give a damn, you know, cause otherwise he could have just said, take him and I'm the end of my quest. Yeah, but. Ba but baby Yoda does have to start doing some more stuff though. We need to see some more force so stuff we, from him. We did. I did expect to use a little bit, at least use the force to break his fall or something. Um, yeah. Cause it, as, as we go on, there's some stuff that he does that, uh, yeah, the only I... time we see him use the force in this episode is for, other purposes which are gross but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it <laughs> um in fact um let's move on real quick and let's talk about his deal uh so well first of all he he has to from you know losing his speeder bike which is destroyed he takes what's left and he's carrying everything including baby yoda and, and the mando armor yeah geez. and all this shit and he's walk he must have walked miles through the the desert into the cantina where he finds uh uh, I had like Mad Ellie. Max Beyond Thunderdome flashbacks there where he's like carrying all of his stuff through the, yeah. the wasteland. And I mean, he's physically exhausted. I mean, he's 
this whole episode he's just trying to rest <laughs> from that and, and trying to recoup because he's everyone's he's waking a, his ass up <laughs> yeah he's fought a crate dragon you know he's done all this and he just keeps going and he's just tired you know yeah no that's, that's something worn I, out yeah um I, I don't know but uh but then he comes to Pelly and Pelly cons him out of his money <laughs> And not only does she con him out of his money, but she sets him up on this whole crazy deal with the uh, the lizard lady, and that's literally what they're calling her, lizard lady. Because yeah. I looked in the the uh... IMDb, basically just has <laughs> yeah. lizard, lady. lizard lady. So lizard man, lizard lady, lizard, man, yeah. lizard lady. They're not, you know, not giving us a character name there. Um, so clearly, there are lizards in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So to me, I'll 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 ask you guys this question: Do you think Pelly is? It has to be onto him, don't you think? That she knows how he really is. Otherwise, I would not screw with a Mandalorian as bad as she screws with him during that whole scene. What do you guys think, uh, Brian? Go ahead. I mean, I just think that's part of that's part of her personality. That's, oh, okay. that's it, it, I just think that's was just the way she is. Doesn't and matter. She's very, yeah, she's very she's very open mm -hmm. about everything she does. She's not trying to you know she's not really trying to hide anything. But she does try to skim a little bit off the top, like we like we saw with um, what you call it from the the, the, um, um, tri the trilogy and the original trilogy, not the original trilogy, but the prequels. Um, the flying guy, the Jewish guy. Oh, oh yeah, the very you're, obvious you're Jewish water. water, water yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 like kind of we kind of we see with him. You know, he's very very open, but he always tries to pull things his direction. So she's doing the same. She kind of she has that shipyard mentality. With she even has the droids. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, she has That's she has true. the droids to work for, her and point. she tries she tries to pull everything towards herself, like like she's playing for that money. She's like, oh, he's on a hot streak. Gotcha. Oh, here's five hundred, and she's like, ah, I hear you, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nubian, we have we are the only ones that have these parts. Oh, anyway. Yeah, I mean. But yeah, that's a good point. I think about Watto at all. That that's a great point, Brian. Go ahead, John. No, I was gonna say like um, I was gonna say she's. Like, she's She's open to a point. She does seem to omit a lot of details, though. Yeah, I just. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not saying she's like for, forthcoming with the, with the information, but she does. <laughs> she gives out just enough to keep you around. Yeah, I guess yeah, she, she does that. Yeah, I guess she's just used to being around nobody, bad, badass people <laughs> or people that are that that are I mean, that just... are you know are are the more the the smugglers and all that. I guess because. I wouldn't mess after seeing what Mando can do. I wouldn't do all that and mess with him. But again, she's know. she's not doing stuff that would like. Well, no, she's you know. she's just like poking at him. But yeah, she's poking just... the bear. But I wouldn't even poke the bear. I, but I, you know, just hazing him if anything, or just she knows I, she's clearly got to know that she's got a, an in with him. Yeah, you know yeah. that he has a code, and he she's she not knows. doing anything to mess with him outright that would yeah you know go against his code. So and that he's gonna he's going to tolerate her her nonsense basically. Yeah, 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 because of the code mostly. But yeah, I just thought it was like man, that's ballsy, man. <laughs> <laughs> this guy can kill anything in like two seconds, and yeah, but anyway, um, and then we find out that uh, when the uh, as soon as the uh, the uh, uh, lizard lady comes out with a backpack full of her own personal unfertilized eggs um, and that she needs to get to this planet the next day and she can't do hyperspace because it'll kill the eggs and because they need to be fertilized within the next 24 hours by her husband who's on this moon it's just like <laughs> There was a lot of technicalities in this that really stretched the Star Wars universe. And I was just like, and then, then Baby Yoda, you know, they, they see the egg canister and his eyes just light up like, ooh. And I'm like, oh, no, no, well, no, no, see, no, at, no. At first I was like, okay, maybe he's sensing the connection with them or whatever. I mean, even though they're unfertilized, but. I thought that might have been, I, I'm with you there. I was. I, but I'm that, still like, but... I was like, oh no. We no, I've I, seen him eat a frog and everything else, and I'm like, oh well, that, no. that's that's where I thought it was coming from. Yeah. It, it was yeah. like, you know, like he he already he already digs the, eating the frog. Yeah. It, like maybe he just gets it's like us with like, you know, caviar. You know? And he's just the farther I hate it. the farther back in the process it goes, he's like, oh, <laughs> eggs. <laughs> and just to see him eat them, dude, I'm just like, oh, oh, I wanted to throw up, and I'm like, because I, you know, they're. I mean, we do the same thing with chicken eggs, but it's still, it's just like... Uh, they, well, it's the thing is, these eggs were just, like, soft. Yeah, you know, they didn't was, have, like, a hard they shell. Like, they were looking like they were embryo. I mean, they're embryo. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I was like... Ugh. It was just, like, swallowing the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like... <laughs> you know, and the funny thing is, like, the first time it happened, 
like he ate the one and then he was stopped and then we have stuff that happens to the ship later i thought that all the other eggs were going to be gone yeah, and that that's that you know when he put his hand on that what he realized was he saved the one in his mouth i, I thought that was the that's direction they were going go. but no they decided they wanted to continue the meme of uh, baby yoda eating a frog from last year so i think they wanted to up their game in this episode i guess and now we know why there's a bobblehead <sighs> with him like going crazy around the canister of eggs because yeah. they made one and everybody was speculating what does y that mean you know what they they probably did that because that was uh, the equivalent of the chicken nuggie chicken nuggies chicken nuggies the chicken nuggies for baby Yoda mm, yummy you know, so eggies. you could just like easily superimpose like a chicken nuggie <laughs> in front of the egg for the whole episode yeah, they, well, it, it, get it, ready it, for like, it I'm telling you it's gonna happen yeah, like they did the whole chicken nuggie thing and, and so but like how do we make sure that we kids know that they're, they're not they should eat all the time. <laughs> right, eating is eating that much junk food is bad all the time. So then they do the, the whole like we'll get into later with this. With the, yeah, with he's eating yeah, the other eggs. Uh, spider. <laughs> don't eat eggs and bugs. Yeah, don't and eggs frogs. And bugs. <laughs> you, you don't want to. You don't want to eat lizard eggs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it does make me. It does it does? I did have this wild thought. It made me wonder: Does Yoda eat like this? Then did did he did he eat more? Does he eat more than root stew? Like we saw him eat with Luke on Dagobah. Oh, I'm assuming. I'm assuming he does. I yeah. mean, I just he probably he probably eats dead birds and raccoons and possums and everything else. <laughs> he's in a swamp. He probably eats gator. <laughs> you know, he eats gator. He's out there rustling. He's a yeah. crikey. Yeah. <laughs> Kill me an alligator, I will. <laughs> That's not a horse. This is a horse. <laughs> a horse that not is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's out there choking an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Brian. You know, you you mentioned the X wings. Let's talk about the the run in with the X wings. Um, uh, we already brought it up. Uh, his name is Paul. Help me out here, Sun Sun Young Lee. Sun Young Lee. Boy, wow, there's a joke there. Um, and he plays Captain Carson Tiva. He's the one that does most of the talking. And of course, Mr. Dave Filoni returns. As, oh, that's who that was. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's Mr. Filoni, and he is. Uh, his great character Trapper Wolf, um, mm -hmm. which is fantastic because we all know how much he loves wolves and yep. wolves and, and the cartoons and everything else. Um, what'd you guys think? I'll, I'll, um, I'll uh, there's some things I'll point out as we go, but what'd you guys think of just this whole shakedown with him and this like traffic? It, it was originally is like a traffic stop gone bad, you know. That's that's basically what it was, yeah. yeah. And I I like that exchange because. Before that, we had... Now, this is a very difficult thing for writers. You have two characters who don't understand what each other is saying. Mm -hmm. And you have a third character who says nothing. <laughs> so, I was I, I was kind of curious how long they were going to go on with that. But then when we get to this uh, stop gone wrong, it's it, it, that's, that's what it was. It was like yeah. a checkpoint that went the wrong way. Went which, wrong. that worked out well. That, was, that played out well. I like that. Yeah. What do you and, think? Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, you made the note there, and that's yep. that's the exact same thing I thought when you said "May the Force be with you." Yeah. And then you wrote, and then you said back, "And also with you." I was like, like "Star Wars Catholic joke, like, yep, canon." There it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like I loved it. That was that was my moment of the episode, right there. We're all former Catholics or former Catholics here, so it's like, <laughs> yes, that's because we've been saying that for years. Uh, Brian, what did you think of the traffic stop here? The X wing. It was cool to see um, the X wings it, in general. It was yeah, it was, cool. it was cool to see the X wings. But I thought was odd was, um, wasn't Filoni part of the the task force that came in and blew up the station? Yes. So yes. didn't he already see Ray and Crest leave? You would think they did, but they at the time they didn't know he was involved in the. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is that he we already knew that he already knew the ship. Yeah, yeah. I, that's probably what he was thinking. And then when they he gave him the ping, that's when they it came up with the information. When he, he finally got him to turn on his switch, his uh, beacon or whatever you want to call it, that's how they were able to run the numbers and figure the rest out. But yeah, you would think he was probably suspicious from the get go, but he wasn't talking if, at, at all until he goes, Let, "Can you go over to channel two? And that's when you, uh, know, you see the. And I really thought, I really thought position. that that um, the Mandalorian would have went to channel two. Uh, no, I, I actually that's kind of a onset inside joke there. Oh. Going to Channel 2, like, because we all have walkies and earpieces in our ear, and every department has their own uh, channel. 
So Channel One's always like main production, the ADs and the PAs and everyone. They're trying to control the set. But if you're on that channel and you hear go to two, yeah, shit's going down. Oh. Someone's in trouble, oh, okay. and something's about to happen on set. So really? go to two. Like the second I heard that, I was like. Oh, something's bad's about to happen, and of course, like two seconds later, the Got they went to attack, attack position. position right, well, that's what I kind of figured, but I thought we would have went. Um, he went, "Hey, can you go to two? And then like, yeah, you never want to. to two, and <laughs> you, then... you never want to go to two when you're on set ever. Ever. No, no, but I'm saying like, man, like what I'm saying is like Mando. Oh, he was smart enough to flip, <laughs> no. flip the channel. No, Mando no. goes to two and he hears, "Hey, this guy's not checking out." Well, no, because that's that's you know what I mean, like, because that's a code for somebody else to stay off their channel yeah well it, it's like when you, well, use a, when you I, I understand i understand yeah. that john what i'm saying is i'm thinking that mando would have been smart enough to switch channels to channel two yeah unless it wasn't something he had uh you know yeah. access to well, it, was, right. it was like if you're if you got if you're driving with somebody on the expressway and you say go to foxtrot then that's you you already got a predetermined channel between the two of you, you know where to go. Hey, can you switch over to Foxtrot, then you go. I would assume that Mail Lauren would have had a scanner, though. You would think so. I, I'm with you. I don't know. Apparently, as we hear, his uh, his ship's really old. It is. It's uh, pre yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, surplus, uh, pre 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 Empire surplus. I think I think he got it in like maybe the uh, Firefly. You know. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of is in a way. It runs. It does nothing falls off of it yet. Well. Without being damaged, anyway, <laughs> it's damaged a bit. It's it's. If some of was at the honest trailers. They pointed out like the the parallels between Mandalorian and, and Firefly. Yeah, yep. it's like the only downside is like the only difference. This one gets a second season. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch! Yeah, there. shade thrown. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, so remember how he was you know if we go all the way back to chapter five remember how he's saying he doesn't want all this heat coming down on him from this and this is exactly why because you know they like uh were you uh but you involved in this and this time were you there and then of course chase is on after that which is i love the chase scene um i loved how the mando just flew incredibly erratic i <laughs> especially when he cut the plummeted <laughs> yeah free falling backwards i'm like holy shit um i don't know what'd you guys think of that like that that, that, was, that, that was, was a neat little chase yeah. yeah i thought so brian what do you think well obviously you know it, it was a it was a the ships so yeah. it was a, one of my one of my favorite parts of this whole, sh whole episode gotcha was that sure. flying flying out of the in and out of the clouds and everything else yeah um i did think it was odd though that he did all those maneuvers dropping straight down and then by the time he made it to the bottom they were right there next to him yeah I well, thought that was, kind of, I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm um, assuming they're tracking him, some because they they lose the signal eventually, but they do have some. They're somehow they're tracking him, I guess. I guess because he's still pinging, he may not have turned that off. I guess, but yeah, I mean, it could be. It was just, I just, I was, I was like, yeah. I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> on, then, they're on his ass big time. But they're X wings. I mean, they're you yeah. Know, compared and then when, to he, these... then when he, then when he, then when he, then when he cut the engine, then he slid on the on the ice up yeah. underneath that little ridge there. I was like, oh hell yeah! And I was like, <laughs> yep. oh no. And they just crack yeah, yeah. like the ground cracks under him and just falls straight down. Yeah, and that, that's yeah. that's why I write in the notes here because I'm just like his bad luck, his bad day, and his bad luck just continues, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> every, catch every, a break in this whole episode. Every time I see a Star Wars ship, and if it's like flying through canyons like it is, I yeah. I always have that music from Empire in the asteroid field playing yeah. in my head. <laughs> 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 oh. Yeah, and, so and then I love how the frog lady ends up shaming. He's basically said, "We're we're we're done." Well, this ship's total. There's like yeah. the hole is like There's ripped open. Hole There's so, that's why that's the moment I thought all the eggs were gone. Yeah, you know, like that's where I thought like she lost everything, and we we're gonna see Baby Yoda <laughs> had that one in his mouth, and he kept safe because when he put his hand on, he knew. Yeah. So I was like, and eh, apparently not. No, 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 no. Baby yeah. has a uh, in, in, insufferable appetite for eggs. Apparently, um. But I like how she, she you know, she taps into the droid, which I think we'll talk about here in a minute. But she uses the droid, and she shames him using his own creed or his own. Um, Basically, I, guess, I thought Mandalorians were bound by their word. Their word. I guess that was well, a kid story. It, yeah, I mean, I guess not. She, she totally shames him into getting back to work. Because he's he's basically he's like I'm tired we're done for the day Let he wants to take his up. third nap yeah <laughs> try his third power nap of the day and she's just like she shames him into it and he gets right back to work you know yeah well it's funny is then and then she's working and then all of a sudden or he's working and all of a sudden she just leaves 
Yeah, and she's like, oh, I'm gonna take a, a bubble. I'm gonna take a bath or a spa or a hot, 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 yeah. uh, hot springs bath. I don't know. I mean, hey, for, for the fact, lady. <laughs> well, because here's the thing: is like, if she is like a frog I'd or an amphibian or a lizard or whatever, yeah. she needs to stay warm, and that probably kept her and the eggs alive. So I, yeah. I thought like when she found that hot spring, it's like, okay, cool, she found something to stay alive. Yeah. So. It's the only thing I thought of. Yeah, and we've already talked about this a little bit, but I, I really think her messing with that droid is going to be bad news for him down the line. I think that's a plot point that they're going to use. You think for, it's maybe like a beacon or something? Yeah, I think it's going to – she she accidentally, not knowingly, he has some sort of internal homing beacon, and that's going to bring the gang after him for revenge. You know, they're going to be able to track that through space or whatever. You know, I, I just think – I. I just to, because he says you shouldn't be messing with it, because he went. They made that extra point for him to say for her not to be use, not to be messing with that droid. That droid's a killer. Just kind of. I, I don't know. I took note of it. I don't know. What do you think, John? You think it's possible from a from a writing perspective? I, I mean, I'd I'd be all for having Richard Aote's voice back because yeah. I love the IT crowd, and it'd be great to hear him back there. Right. But I I don't know. Yeah, well, I, don't I just have to see how the rest. Stretch. I have to see how the rest of the season plays out and if, you know, it fits in. Okay. So, All right. So, I don't know. I, I just think it might be an issue. We'll see. But, um, all right. So, let's move on to the big Rebels crossover moment. Uh, so, for the first time ever, uh, the the uh, Karin... Here we go. Uh, Krikna. Krikna. That's how that seems yeah. to read up there. Yep. The Krikna, which are uh, from, and I will bring this up from Rebels. We've seen these guys in Rebels, the space spiders, if you will. <laughs> Um, now this is what they how they were drawn in Rebels, um, and it, that goes all the way back to season three of Rebels uh, when they were on planet uh, Adalon. There we go. And uh, what? Oh, yeah. sorry, I was just trying. I was trying. Yeah, I was trying to, yeah, was trying to do okay. it like based on the screen up there. Sorry. <laughs> so you can see this was this is what we saw in that in those episodes throughout pretty much most of season three and. and these the what I was when I saw Baby Yoda go for the for the egg and he starts he eats the spider egg his insatiable <laughs> <laughs> egg uh, gets him in he's the one that gets him all in trouble right um, but you know to see that as soon as I saw the legs I'm like oh shit and I'm like this isn't good because in Rebels these guys were blaster proof and both Kanan and Ezra who had lightsabers had a hard time with these guys. In fact, I think yeah. if you had blasters, the only way you could kill them was they shot them in the eye. If I remember right, Brian, is that right? Yeah, but, yeah, but wasn't wasn't it because they were um, they were surface dwellers too, though, right? Uh, yeah, they well, like, the, and these guys seem to be below surface. So well, maybe that's the difference. Well, was they it also a nice planet too? too? Was it a nice planet on Rebels? No, it was or? like a desert no. planet. Like so that that might be planet. another thing too. Like their bodies might have been different based on the climate. I think so. I think it's they're like cousins to probably what we saw in, in this, and they're they're just happen to be a little bit weaker. Um, but yeah, the ones that in Rebels they were blaster proof and oh, they were just menacing, right? And yeah, they, they were nasty. But to see these things in live action took it to a whole new level, I thought. In fact... Well, like live action for CGI. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I think they used this drawing, which was a drawing, you know, Ralph McQuarrie, who Lucas hired years ago to do a bunch of uh, work. So I have a question about that. Is that yeah. thing laying eggs? Yes. So it's laying McQuarrie, eggs out of its mouth. Yeah. So it looks like McQuarrie got <clears throat> some of the design from the face hugger from alien as well as the alien queen, yes. how it lays her eggs. I, I think so because it's, it's very, it, the, the whole sequence to me felt very uh, alien. I was actually going to bring that up. What did you guys feel about the whole? I was, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely right out of alien. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I expected the, the egg to like, just do that little opening thing. Mm, yeah, very much so. But I, I think this is more of what they were going for. Um, it was this, this version rather than what we saw in rebels, the animated version. So, I think they're trying to make a distinction that they're similar to what we saw in Rebels on Adalon, but they're definitely different, and they're just more ugly. And uh, I love how the when the mouth came down on the, the canopy and you saw the teeth inside, like, going around and around you know, and around, like, that was freaking badass in my opinion. The one thing I, th I, I thought we were going to see, like, since it was kind of a wintry planet, yeah, I was expecting to see, like, that snow beast from Empire. I thought so, too. Oh, you thought right? you were going to bring that, right? the, uh, the Wampus. I yeah, Wampus. Yeah, Wampus. Yeah, Wampus. Well, I I thought, that would have been cool. I didn't even think about that. that you know what's funny been... is I, I was I was like, are we gonna see a one-armed one? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been I'm cool if it had been Hoff. I'm I mean, still Hoff, alive. But... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what I actually originally thought it was gonna be was was gonna be one of those 
um, those beasts, or several of those beasts. Hey, he's back. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get rid of him. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I, um, so, I don't know. I thought the whole thing was just really well done. I, I, I love the, the, the suspense, the craziness, the... Anybody that hates insects, like, would yeah, get I, a, it was like... it was arachnophobia on steroids, you know, in, in Star it, Wars mode. What it was, was it was that, that uh, canyon in that one scene from King Kong with all the giant bugs in. Oh, yeah. Oh, remember? Yeah, I forgot about you remember that? that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's similar. But... Like, even has, like, the big, like, worm thing going over. Mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah, the worm. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. But yeah, this was, this was like I said, this is the creature part of Star Wars that, you know, like the Rancor or the, the Sarlacc Pit or, you know, the, the menacing giant creature that the, that the hero comes up against, you know, and... Uh, or the tiny little ones in there, or the too. Tiny yeah. ones like, cause the, the, the there's, like, they vary in size. You got, like, the newborns. You got, like, what looked like the teenagers. Mm -hmm. And the, the funny thing is, like, when you hear... When you saw Baby Yoda eating the, uh, the one at first, I was like, okay, where's Mommy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he kills Mommy with the, the grenade or whatever. Whatever, yeah. The whatever, charge, and then yeah. Daddy comes along and comes through the cockpit. <laughs> And it's just like Jesus. Yeah, no, yeah. like the ship was like they were gonna take off. They're like lifting up, and the, the, the thing just like a larger one jumps right down. I was like, son of a bitch. And I even love how they put a little one on Baby Yoda's head, and Baby is like, ah. like I, I, I was wondering, my like, daughter's if, freaking out. She's like, no. Like if that mouth came down, because again, I don't yeah. watch Rebels. It's like, is that like, uh, is does it eat him that way, or is it like? They, I don't know. Rebels, I'm so used to seeing brain they slugs. They, people just disappear. They don't okay. really show anybody being eaten because it's a cartoon. Kids yeah. cartoon. But yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. But I, I, I just loved it. The whole the aliens feel. Yeah, the mommy Shelob and Daddy Shelob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So uh, just awesome, awesome stuff. Um, and then they get rescued, but they don't get saved. This this is the part, the one part of the episode I had a problem with. Um, and this is only because I of my view of what I think rebels should be. And we've, we've had this conversation before in rogue one when we did rogue one and they expand it, you know, like reality versus what our expectations oh. of what we think rebel oh, people should the, be. The star Wars nihilism. Yes. That's, that's yeah. what rogue one was. Well, it was, <laughs> you know, it was, yeah. Everyone's an asshole yeah. and everyone <laughs> dies. Life sucks. Well, you know, and it, 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 Lucasfilm. It, and, it, and, it, and it goes against, you know, my, my feeling as a kid is every rebel pilot, every X-Wing pilot, anybody that wears the X-Wing suit is, is a hero, you know, and that's not necessarily always the case. Um, because they get saved by, uh, by Filoni and, uh, um, the Captain Tiva, uh, and, but they don't rescue them. They don't help him get, get out of the, uh, out of the jam that he's in. Um, I don't know how did that sit with you guys. John, I was I was fine. You're like right it's it. you know, because again, that's what I think Mandalorian does really well. Because for Star Wars, Star Wars was definitely it was geared towards kids. Yeah. So good was good, bad was bad. Mm -hmm. There was never an in between. Yeah. But when you're doing a western like this, especially when we're living in the post Unforgiven era of westerns, yeah. there's a lot of like deconstruction of morality, and mm -hmm. so you've got to have a lot more of that gray area, which we kind of talked about before with uh, mm -hmm. the Amy Sedaris's character in the beginning, where she's kind of annoying, kind of you know in your face, but she's got you know she's basically good natured and does you know the right things all the time right so th that the show does gray areas very well because a lot of this is very anti-hero in yeah. the show which is fine like it's it's okay and i i didn't mind that too much especially when they went down the list of when they recognize the ship mm -hmm. they're like you were involved in this you were harboring a fugitive but weren't you also the one that put your life on the line for this guy and, and you caught three of like, our right. one in. so yeah. therein is also the gray area as well mm -hmm. so it's like we'll help you but again and then I think the last line is what uh, sold it to is when he says we're really stretched thin well he just said that these are difficult times yeah these are difficult times yeah. so yeah which means like, stretched thin to me but yeah I mean because they're starting a, a new republic basically which mm -hmm. and I uh, I swear at some point in the show they mentioned that they were stretched thin, but mm -hmm. that's kind of what I got. Like, you know, we'll help you, but we can't stay around too long to help. So, mm -hmm. fine. You're all right. Okay. <laughs> no, that was okay. Brian, what did you think? Did you think, 
like John did that it was it was just you know part of the anti-hero or part of the 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 the, the overall story and that they're human or did you like me where you like me where I was like you know these are the good guys these are the the old the good old good guys that I know as kids then would always help and always be the 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 ultimate you know always always to the the rescue not just the save but rescue what do you think um I I think. I think that we were they were the uh, they were just there for the the save, not the rescue. Yeah, yeah I really, I really, I, I feel like it was it was more so the um, you're saving Grace as you did all this other good stuff, so we're not gonna we're not gonna take you in, mm -hmm. but we're also not gonna put ourselves in danger, right? By help, by help, by staying here and helping you, and not patrolling our area that we're supposed to do because mm -hmm. there's bigger, there's better threats out there than you. Gotcha. But. We'll, we'll leave you we'll leave you be mm -hmm. and you know, we're glad we could save you from whatever you needed but mm -hmm. we're not gonna we're not gonna get you out of the situation that you're in yeah like because he, he, he even said he goes he goes how about you help speed up my 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 whatever he said rehabilitation of this blah blah blah, blah and so i can get out of here faster yeah right how about, so he, you, turn, how about you turn so, on your beacon and we'll leave you alone or, yeah, yeah it's like so, so, so they so they know that he can do it by himself and he can get himself out of there mm -hmm. so it's not like they're leaving him to die Gotcha. Because I, th I think it, I think it had that been a different situation. I don't think I don't think we would have seen the same mm -hmm. scenario. I think we would have seen them help. I started making excuses for him. So, <laughs> and, and I did. I in my mind, I'm like, okay, is it because is, maybe it's they're stretched too thin? Or the other thought I had is maybe they, they don't want to risk it with him because he is the Mandalorian per se. Yeah. Maybe his reposition. Or know, if anything, he has yeah. to Mando has to retain his anonymity. Yeah, you know. Right, but I don't know. I was just like I was trying to think of anything. I was like, man, this sucks. I mean, I, you know? I think it, I think it's just the story was written that way. Yeah, okay. this is how it was written. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't know. I was just like, well, maybe they just don't want to mess with him because they they can't really trust him completely, and they don't want to get knocked <laughs> off or something. I, you know, I don't know. Well, again, that's but, that's that's the thing that I hate when motivations aren't clearly defined in a movie, mm -hmm. like. That, that to me is a humongous like drawback in which when your audience is left filling in the blanks like mm -hmm. there, there's a point in which you can leave things to like to question which is like you, you can present questions but you know and have the audience fill it in but at the same time when it's stuff the writer is supposed to be doing mm -hmm. the writer is supposed to convey the story and the motivation and subtext as well when, when a writer doesn't do that that's a bit of a weak spot. Like if you're mm -hmm. if your fans are out there trying to fill in the blanks on their own, I was like, that's that's not good. That's not a good. So that is not good. good writing. So a little bit of plot hole maybe going on there. A little bit of weakness in writing. writing. <laughs> you know? okay. Which that's fair. and again in this episode, I think we can. I think we're all in kind of an agreement with just the fact that it was a weaker episode. Mm -hmm. It was you know? compared, to, especially compared to last week. I mean, last week yeah. was just. <laughs> Right. John, do you do you consider that weak writing, or or them trying to get their audience to become more and more enveloped into the into the into the show? Well, again, like I say, like when motivation of a character is left for people to speculate, and we have no other hints or any reason why they did it, that is a bit of a question too. But again, in this case, like. I mean, let me let me look at it now. Now we you got us three talking about it, and you got Willenbring trying to. He's like, well, what kind of excuses would he have? And he's trying to think of ideas and everything else, and get him more involved in the show. No, um, so you think they're no. doing it on purpose to string people like me into it, Larry? Well, that's what I'm. Why, that's what I'm, would, that's, why that's, would the good, why would the good guys do this? Kind of. That's thing. what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Hank, right? I'll tell you this right now: that is just the sign of bad writing. <laughs> but uh, that's the thing. I don't think that was the intent of that scene, though. No, I don't either. Like but, I. But it might. I mean, to be fair, if I may, I think that was you projecting true. what your ideals of an X-wing pilot should have been. Well, and I did the same thing in Rogue yeah. One. I'm like, yeah, that's not the Rebels. That's, right. You know. That, but but that's twelve year old Brian in my head right. going. You know, and, trying and, to justify. And that's know? what I think Mandalorian's good at is because it took us when we were kids. Mm -hmm. We knew what we grew up with, mm -hmm. and now it's giving us this gray area. Yeah. And and to your credit, Ang, like what we were saying like they defined that there is that gray area with mm -hmm. that scene so yeah. their motivation like i'm now i'm not saying the motivation in this scene was badly done i'm saying like when it's 
done and badly in a film or a show or anything like that. Right, mm-hmm. right. But in this case, the like, director, maybe yeah. the director missed the mark a little bit. Well, we'll get to me and the director later. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, but overall, like, it's, like I said, yeah. serviceable. Gotcha. That, that was the yeah. one thing I took away from the episode. Okay, that's fair. All right, so let's talk about the end. So, um, I called it just limping off into chapter 11. Uh, <laughs> I did like that visual of the broken ship. I mean, this thing is... <laughs> the cargo bay door is like, it's flapping open. He, yeah, he's got he's got it stitched together with bubblegum scotch tape and, you know... I it don't was know the most else. redneck of Star Wars spaceships <laughs> I'd ever seen. <laughs> just got that, that granny on the top. Knitting. Um, but yeah, it was... Uh, it was so... Uh, left with no choice they have to live in the cockpit he says the only thing you can fix and the only thing you can pressurize right and they're just gonna limp onto this moon where you know she can meet her husband and supposedly where the mandalorians are and all this stuff and um i don't know it's gonna be interesting to see if the ship can even survive re-entry into another planet much <laughs> less make it through space uh you know talk about the Firefly here, yeah. You, you know, shit just falling <laughs> yeah. off as it's as it's, it's flying on. Um, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see how that takes place. Are, are, is it going to be resolved right away, or is it going to be? Is the next episode going to be like a, you know, fight for survival in space kind of? So I don't think it will be, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I sincerely hope she gets to that planet, and that's the beginning of the episode. So, that's because ex- yeah. again, like I was saying, with the dynamic of you have three characters one doesn't talk mm-hmm. the other one doesn't understand the uh, third <laughs> so and now they don't even have access to that other part of the ship that has the droid right. and again i guess uh is there no vacuum in space with this like because well, the, the doors and everything are opening well, that's, but yeah well that's what he said he said he can only pressurize the cockpit right so that's so, it the rest of the ship is open to open space so so uh, that droid is probably like free floating out in space right now as long as yeah. well as like everything else that's not like secured by those doors right. so. so it'll be it'll be interesting yeah um, so yes it has to land on a planet i sincerely uh, hope i would hope so i in fact i'm move the story along i'm pretty sure it does because in brian and if correct me if i'm wrong there's that that one shot in the uh the trailer when we see it like going by a big gas uh gas giant planet you see the the razor crest and it's limping along and the, the flaps open and everything. oh yeah. yeah yeah so i i think i think that'll be the beginning of the next episode i don't know what do you think brian how do you think it's going to play in the next next episode? This whole, I just I just hope they make it fit. Like I hope they hope we don't open up the next sequence with, oh, he magically fixed that back door. Ah, uh, you know yeah. what I mean. And and it, and 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 it just comes in and lands like normal. And then when it hits the ground, you know things fall off <laughs> because you're like it's already falling apart, like you said. Yeah. You know, will it will it make reentry? What's what is it going to lose other than the back door? Right. So. Yeah, you know, just how much damage are we talking about here? Um, and, and how's he going to get it fixed, even? You know, is he going to be stranded on this planet or this moon or whatever? Or wherever it is, yeah. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure, guys, um, just by uh, watching our intro today that I put together for this for these episodes, I'm I'm pretty sure that the that that uh, water it looks like a water port town of some kind. They're walking through. I saw, I saw the, I saw a lizard lady with the thing on her backpack while as, as we were, as I was watching our intro today to start the show. So I'm pretty sure that's the episode. And if that's the case, that's going to be the episode where we've got uh, Sasha Banks okay. and her mysterious, whatever I think will be the next episode. So <laughs> I definitely... now, correct me if I'm wrong. We've not really, I mean, okay. Outside of that little skiff in uh, rise of Skywalker mm-hmm. and every other like water planet or, well, okay, we've only had one water planet in Attack of the Clones. Mm-hmm. We've not really seen boats in the really. show. Like they've either no. been like spaceships that can like land on water or or they're hover by water or they're or, living yeah. above water. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like that's you know, that's kind of neat. I think you could go. I, the only thing that's underwater, I think, is episode the Gungans. one. The Gungans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's it. So it'll be interesting to see uh, a water world planet. Yeah, sure. like like uh, the uh, Star Wars Especially technology of, of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. So, uh, what do you think about that, Brian? About next? I mean, I want to get into next episode if it's, too. Much. If it's the next episode, if it's the next, if it, episode. If it's the next episode, that'd be kind of cool. You know, you see see Sasha Banks grab a hold of the Raven Crest and go do it, 
her little hand in front of her face. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the boss. Yeah. <laughs> <That was both>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we end the episode, and damn it, if he doesn't, Yoda, little baby, Yoda, the child, has not learned its lesson about the fucking eggs. He, he pops another one. I'm just wondering how many eggs she's going to have left by the time we get to the next episode. I think she's got like half a container left now. If that. <laughs> He's Which, going to and, town. Yeah. On him. And frankly, here's what gets me. We've not seen Baby Yoda be this much of an asshole. <laughs> In season one, it was never this much of an asshole. And now at least at, le- at least by a... episode two well, last he's... season, Have he we... was like force choking a like woolly rhino. So if we, if we hit if we hit the uh, fearsome threes, is he a three year old uh, now? Is is he, he, he's everything? 50 years old. Remember, oh, I know, he is 50. I know, but has he, has he reached his three year old stage where God. he's into shit and won't listen? <laughs> and yeah. everything is no. <laughs> it's terrible too. It's terrible to I'll do what I want. <laughs> What's that? I'll do what I want. <laughs> I mean, he. I mean, he kind of was like that with like the leaning over and the switch thing. Mm. I mean, there was, there yeah, was that. There but, was that, but but that was even that was kind of funny. I mean, it wasn't. Mm. You're not eating someone's kids, you know. Where no. it's like the la- like it's the yeah. last of her family line, right? And she's got to get that there. What the hell? How is that funny? That wasn't funny to me. Now, it's not cute now, either. No, when you think about does, it, does she keep replenishing? No, that's. I it. don't know. That's, she even says it to him when she's talking to him through the, um, the robot. She says this is the her last cycle. Or yeah. Whatever. So she. Oh, can't okay. Have it. I, I didn't, I didn't know if like she got, just kept replenishing because I was like, well, why she was in she... that hot spring. I thought maybe. Well, yeah, that's what I. That's what I thought. I thought those were like maybe mm-hmm. new ones, and I was like, why we keep? Why are we dumping them into this hot? Spring? I, I would guess just to like retain heat because of like, like why would their... just put the whole container in? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, true. But again, yeah. like we're also speculating motivation here too. Which... Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. But yeah, her little trip to the hot springs. I didn't really quite, other than to move the plot along. That's it, yeah, of... and I think that's. Mm, I'll tell you this: that I write a lot, and <laughs> that is a major pet peeve of mine. Like when <laughs> it's like, oh, why are they there? Oh, because story. <laughs> like. No! Lazy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right. So let's, uh, that's pretty much the episode, fellas. So, uh, let's get into final thoughts and grades. Uh, John, I'll let you go first today. Um, again, serviceable. serviceable. <laughs> the best I can do is B minus. I can't say I didn't okay. enjoy it. Yeah. Um, it lost, again, it lost points where, like, it felt like they were just moving things along just to get them to places. But mm-hmm. at the end, I wanted to know what the hell the places had to do. What was the payoff? So there's fair points too. You know I mean? It's like, what was this all about? <laughs> like, what did, what did this further, if anything of the show? Yeah. To me, I'll, I'll give it a solid B. Uh, to me, I, I think the episode shouldn't have been the passenger. I think it should have been a really bad day in space or just the Mandalorian has a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> because he keeps shit just keeps happening to him he, he can't rest let him nap that's what <laughs> he gets ep, ep, chapter 11 is just going to be called let him nap let him nap <laughs> yeah because he can't sleep everything he does he's being shamed you know to keep working and he's being constantly prodded and poked he, he's being just drug along throughout this entire episode and shit just keeps happening to him and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse um, I, I also give it a B for the creature effect the Star Wars creature effect I really like seeing these these uh, I liked how Filoni used his animation things and he's bringing them into live action and even even though they're slightly different um, I, I love that so for me solid B Brian uh, I'll, I'll go with that I'll go with the B um, what brought it up for me would be the X Wings mm. uh, see, seeing that whole scene there um, yeah. I really enjoyed the very first scene yeah. uh, with the speeder bike that whole that whole interaction mm. um, uh, but. But basically, seeing seeing the X wings, seeing the X wings interact, mm-hmm. um, landing, them. seeing them seeing them shoot from the X wings, shooting the spiders with the blasters. Yeah. I knew I heard from that the sound cockpit. effect. <laughs> yeah, um, I thought that was kind of cool. And I like like you. I don't think this should have been called the passenger. I think it should have been called Mandalorian and a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the title. That's what we'll go with. <laughs> yeah. A series of obnoxious events. And you know what? That yeah. that actually fits the episode perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but by those letter grades, that's actually one like plus symbol below the last episode. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. Oh, wow. And then I don't know if you guys heard or not. Um, they're getting ready to start season three. Yes. Yes. But they're going to take a month off to to film a Bubba Fett miniseries for a month. I have read rumors today that that that, that might they, happen and it might actually yeah. come out before season three is even released. You know what? Until yeah. until I see an Obi Wan Kenobi series, I'm not going to hold anything. Yeah, like, there you go. That's a good point too, John. Because yeah. they because yeah. they said it was it, because it's all filmed during the same time frame, mm-hmm. so it'll be easier to film this this and during like, during a month and knock it out because it's going to be on the same kind of. Well, that you know that volume is so robust and so uh, versatile. You know that 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 and how they can change scenes in like three hours you know, yeah it, it is just ridiculous yeah you know? i was even telling steph like when we watched the show like one of my favorite things to do in like the last couple episodes is now that we know how they film it mm-hmm. with that entire like circular led stage yeah i my, my favorite thing to play is where does the set end it does you know like well i mean that's well it, it does in a way because like you have to know where the physical part of the set ends well, and yeah. the LED kicks in. True. So that that's what's fun to me watching the show is like I I haven't done the how they do this or where does this end before yeah. in a long time in movies even. I just like it's it's just fun to watch this now. I just love but, how they move the camera and everything changes. It's just like but, holy shit, that that's unreal. And and the neat thing too is and I was the, the what I was telling stuff at the end of the episode my wife mm. um was it's like this the way they film this now is probably the best way to make it covid compliant because of the one set that i actually had a chance to work on <clears throat> throughout all this the interaction between people is so minimal mm-hmm. and the fact that you have the option of having just you can create anything around you yeah. and you can space out your crew and you have very few people interacting together at a time and even when you do like uh lizard people that we saw today yeah they have prosthetics and masks and everything on and helmets so you can cover their faces and make them basically yeah COVID, make them safe COVID proof yeah. exactly so yeah. i was like this show just lucked into probably one of the best you know formats <laughs> yeah. to be compliant <laughs> We got a pandemic coming. What can we do? A show about masks. Yes. <laughs> Somebody never takes his helmet off. That's right. <laughs> it's right. It's like, and what do the villains do? They never take their helmets off either. Yes. <laughs> it's like when you see one face amongst everybody. <laughs> we'll just throw Apollo Creed out there and uh, the girl from UFC. They should have ultra. Uh, like, Deadpool. Ultra, Deadpool. Ultra, Gotta throw in Deadpool. Ultra tough. Yeah. Deadpool yeah. too. Ultra tough uh, immune systems, you know. Uh, you know, it's Paulo Creed out there. I mean, come on. Um, all right. So, uh, real quick before we go, that's our review, by the way. And before we go, though, uh, where can you find us uh, on out there in hyperspace uh, online? Uh, the best place to go is www.thenumber4midwestguys.com. Again, that's www.thenumber4midwestguys.com. There you find links to our YouTube, to our Facebook, to our Twitter to uh to uh the podcast every everything is there for you can follow like and subscribe from there as well everything is listed in chronological order as listed if you go down the actual it's like set up like a blog site and you go down and every episode is there and you can watch it literally right on the website itself and then i've got links at the top to every individual show so then then that'll take you to its page just for one show and you can go down in chronological order Best place to go again, number four midwestguys.com. However, if you want to find us on Facebook, it's facebook.com, the number slash the number four Midwest Guys. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at the number four Midwest Guys. Brian, where can they find you on Twitter and Stardust? At, at Eggzone. Uh, you can find myself and Twitter and Stardust at BWilly1977. Um, and if you like uh, behind the scenes kind of stuff, uh, our uh, we're, we post pictures and things like that. Uh, it's Instagram. That's the number four underscore Midwest underscore guys. Good old fashioned email is the number four Midwest guys at gmail.com. And then our newer thing this this year, we started it last year and we're really trying to push it this year is the fan voicemail line. Mm. Da, 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 da. 1-859-363-5952. You call that number and you will hear my lovely voice. And all we ask is that you say who you are, where you're from, and what show you're leaving a comment about. And if we like your voicemail a lot, we'll put it on the air in the next available episode. So that's a great way to reach out to us and a great way to get involved. We would like to hear from you. We want you to be involved in our shows and we like we love to hear feedback. 
we would love to hear anything, honestly, at this point. <laughs> Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, uh, please let us know. Uh, and if you guys are only okay. I just yeah. felt like leaving a voicemail saying you're all okay. That, that would be great. <laughs> that would be great. I would take an okay at this point. Um, but, you know, like, definitely get out there and uh, let us know how we're doing. So, uh, and then that's the best place to go, though, is again. And be sure to hit the, uh, the like and subscribe on the YouTube being here. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that uh, helps us out. And, and leave us a good review, too. That, that helps us out especially so as well. And just make it a good one. That's all I ask. So. All right. Well, John, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. And B. Willie, or I'm B. Willie. Yes, you <laughs> are. <laughs> and Mr. Ankenbauer, thanks for joining us there. And uh, thanks for having me out there in virtual world uh, on Skype. And uh, um, last, I, I, do you want to be a force ghost again today or, or not? I don't need to be a force ghost every week. No, you don't need to be a force ghost. <laughs> we got right. to make it special. No, that, that was just right. a special one-off. Okay. Right. All right. Copy that. <laughs> All right. Well, this has uh, been uh, The Mandalorian. Uh, I've been your host, B. Willie. And as always, may the Force be with you. And also with also you. Also with you. And also with you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>